Welcome to this introduction to winter tree and shrub identification. My name is Mark Duffel and I'm the main botanist and director of Arvensis Ecology. I also teach for Manchester Metropolitan University on their MSc in biology recording and ecological monitoring, which specialises in the identification skills essential for an ecologist. On top of this, I'm also a BSBI referee for garden shrubs, be they native or naturalised escapes. I have long had an interest in trees and shrubs, starting from when, as a child, around five or six years old, I brought home a twig from a winter walk and pushed it into the ground at the end of the walk. I later found it had grown and sprouted leaves in the spring, and that started my fascination. I suspect it was from a willow, perhaps goat willow, but I'll never, be, never know. It is often in winter when the leaves have been stripped away that we can appreciate the forms of trees and shrubs better and often see those similarities between apparently unrelated species. For instance, this is, this is a good time to see the clustered terminal buds of oaks, or the stout opposite buds and numerous bud scales of your maples and sycamores. Many of the features used in winter identification are not surprisingly also useful outside of that season, and the absence of leaves, flowers and fruits forces you to focus on the smaller scales of buds, bud scars and stipule scales. Some of these are obvious, many minute, but in time they can become useful features to quickly make an identification. This introduction will start with looking at some of the useful botanical characters and how they apply to winter tree ID. We'll look at the gross morphology of twigs and buds, followed by more microscopic characters such as stipule scars and the presence or absence of hairs or scales. All of this will be aided significantly by a good quality hand lens, a times 20 would be perfect, and a good field guide. And we'll have a look at some of the available identification guides, some of which are ideal for the field, some of which are less so, and which to choose. And it will be followed by a series of practical exercises in using John Poland's excellent field guide to winter twigs. When looking to identify a tree or a shrub in winter, there's various bits of basic anatomy and terminology that you need to understand. For a start, the use of the words nodes and internodes. Nodes are the parts of a plant where the leaves will emerge from, so in winter it's the point where the buds are. So where I'm in illustrating here with my finger, that is a node, there's another node there, and another node there. Now the gaps between the nodes, so there's one node there and another node there, the gap between is known as the interval between the nodes, or the internode. It's useful when looking at identification of winter tree and shrub specimens to be able to understand is what you're looking at, is it the current season's growth or any other for the previous season's growth. So if we look at our specimen here on the screen, we can see the lovely big fat bud. As we work our way down, we'll see that there's a ring of scars. And those ring of scars are the remains of bud scales. If we work our way down a little bit further, there's another ring of scars there. Working our way further still, there's another ring of scars. And right down here there are as well. So at each point where there's a ring of scars, so like on here, that is the remains of the bud scales. And each bud of those cluster of terminal bud scales is the termination of one year's growth. So in fact, on our specimen, we can go from the youngest part, where there's a cluster of bud scales there forming that big terminal bud. These will leave the scars for next year. If we run our finger down, we find that that is one year's growth, two years growth, three years growth, and finally, four years growth. If we zoom out, we'll see that last year was a very good year for the, this particular plant. It had that much growth for one year last year than the previous year was a shorter length of growth, even shorter, and so on. So we've had very slow years and then a really good year last year. We've got a selection of species here that show a variety of features that are useful for their identification. Firstly, the arrangement of their buds on the stem. Are they opposite? So do they have one bud either side from each other? So almost like a pair. 
Do they have alternate buds, so a strong left right left right, or are they spiraling, so also left right left right but on a spiral or helical form? So if we look at our first two specimens, we can see the buds are clearly left and right. There's one bud on the left where my thumb is, and another one on the other side. So an individual bud either side of the stem. So these two species are, have opposite arrangements of buds. Then we have a specimen which is very strictly alternate. And if we press it down, you can see that none of the buds are hidden. They're all clearly showing. There's a strong left, right, left, right. So these are alternate buds. Last three are examples of alternate, but they're spiralling. If I press this twig down now, I can't do it very well because there's actually a bud hiding behind. So there's one bud hiding on the back, another one here, another here, another here, another there and spiralling. And there would be a bud there, but it's broken off. So spiralling buds. And this is seen particularly well in this specimen of a, of a willow. You can see how it, there we go, left, right. There's one hidden on the back, one on the front, one on the back and one on the, the side again. Here we have a nice example of a typical winter twig bearing a large terminal bud, that's the dark green bud at the tip of the branch or the twig, and then lateral buds, those are the ones that are on the side. And these lateral buds are arranged oppositely, so we've got one on one the right hand side and one on the left. And if we rotate the twig higher up you'll see that there's some tiny tiny little lateral buds as well towards the tip, so there's one there and one just visible on the other side. So this is our terminal bud, and you'll notice the terminal bud is covered in scales, dense scales. That's not always the case. Some buds can be naked. They have no scales on them. In this case, we can see that we've got paired opposite buds. So there's a scale on one side and a scale on the other. So there's a pair of scales there. And if we rotate the bud through 90 degrees, we see there's another pair of bud scales there as well. And this is useful to see because if you have opposite buds, so like here, opposite buds, a left and a right, you'll also have opposite bud scales. So that pattern is repeated throughout the plant. If we look at the arrangement of the branches and the stems as a whole on a, a tree, we can often work out the original leaf arrangement and then when you get up closer to it you can observe those in in finer detail so if we look lower on down on this plant we can see that there's two branches coming off and then if we rotate it you can see there's two more branches coming off so they're nicely paired so that's suggesting to me that this tree has a opposite bud arrangement so see how they divide diverge there and the same here and the same here so if we look closely at this sort of point we should find and there we are beautifully illustrated pair of buds there strictly opposite and notice the line in between them the interpetiolar ridge we can see here two examples of winter twigs one of them which has naked buds they don't have any form of bud scale covering and you can just about see the sort of prim primordial primitive little leaf there that's covered together they're often heavily covered in hairs or some dense sort of scales to protect them and then the other example has multiple uh, scales bud scales and in this case they're spiraling around sometimes they're alternate and the number of scales can be incredibly useful in separating species there's several useful identification features on this slide the first is the two distinct types of buds. The upper buds, those on the right of the screen, with that sort of bishop's mitre, slightly conical shape, are vegetative buds and they will op open later on in the, the new year into becoming leaves, the foliage. Then the lower buds, those towards the right left of the screen, the round orbicular buds, those are going to be the next year's flowers in this case for this particular species. Not all trees have, or shrubs, have very obvious distinctions between the two types of buds, but sometimes you might in the winter get catkins present, either last year's or this year's, or um, young juvenile uh, buds which contain them. Another useful feature here is the leaf scar, where the base of the petiole attached to the stem 
often leaves a distinctive scar and in this particular species John Poland uses the term it looks rather like a monkey's face. I've had students compare it to ET. We can see the distinct vascular bundles, the phloem and the xylem structures that are attached there and it leaves a distinctive scar. In this case it's giving the eyes and the smiley face of the monkey. Stipules, and in particular stipule scars, can be incredibly hard to spot on some species. On this particular species we've got quite flamboyant stipules here. They're present either side of the leaf petiole. This is the petiole of the leaf here. There's our leaf with the petiole or the stalk. You can see nestling at the base of the stalk there's a little bud. But either side, we're not looking at the bud, it's either side. These two structures are the stipules. And if we carefully remove off the leaf, you'll find that the, the petiole comes away, leaves a scar, and there's still the two stipules attached. And when these are removed, they leave a minute scar, and it'll be this minute scar that you're looking for sometimes, and it can be really um, hard to actually spot on your specimen. They're not always very obvious features. There are many more characters that can be used to identify winter trees and shrubs but unfortunately we do not have the luxury of time today to actually dwell on these any further. So let's start by looking at some of the books that are available to help us with winter tree identification. Perhaps surprisingly there are quite a number of books that can aid you with tree and shrub identification in winter. These range from books of the 1930s era to the current era and all of the current taxonomy. Some of them are focused on North American trees and shrubs but include many European species and others just cover native and non-native flora present in the British Isles. William Trelease wrote Winter Botany, an identification guide to native trees and shrubs in 1931 and this third edition has been reprinted in 2015. It has keys to genera and species with at least one page description for the genus and the keys to the species are brief but generally workable. Now there is a very heavy bias to North America, North American species, and there are over a thousand species contained in there. The keys generally work well, but for European botany it covers many genera and species not commonly found either in the wild or cultivation in these regions. But even so it is immensely useful when coming across that alien species that you're unfamiliar with. With this book we're really getting two books in one. Although it's titled A Fruit Key and a Twig Key to Trees and Shrubs, it's biased towards northeastern North America. So there's a fruit key to northeastern trees and a twig key to the deciduous woody plants of eastern North America. It was printed, reprinted rather, in the early 2010s, uh, but originally was produced in 1941 with a follow-up reprint in 1959. So the taxonomy is rather dated, but even so the keys work remarkably well. And there are some very fine black and white photos for many of the species showing close-ups of the buds and thorns and other armour that might be present. It's still useful for alien and planted species that may crop up in the wild in your surveys. In 2013, May and Panther produced a guide to the identification of deciduous broadleaf trees and shrubs in winter, and since then it's had a few reprints and updates, bringing it more in line with current taxonomy. It covers around 70 species, and there are some limitations in the keys. For instance, it doesn't separate bird cherry and wild cherry, prunus pedus and prunus avium, it, it stops at that point, which is possibly not actually a bad thing to do sometimes with tricky groups like that. It does have some issues with the keys, especially when you're around couplet 40, that not all the plants behave or the key was written to too tight a representative group of specimens. But for a beginner, it is an incredibly friendly introduction to what can be a challenging topic. Its keys are pictorial as well as written, and this supports you along the way. So I'd recommend it for the absolute beginner and intermediate botanist alike. It's a really useful guide to have in your armoury. And it's what many of us who learnt Winter Tree ID learnt to bond using this book. Winter Trees, a photographic guide to common trees and shrubs, was written by Price and Persweden in 2013. 
it's an excellent photographic uh, reference to 36 common species. It does clump some species together, so you things like oaks and birches. It doesn't distinguish between the two species particularly, but it's a good comprehensive guide nonetheless, and it's a useful one to have in your arsenal. Next, we come to a huge book by Bernard Schultz, The Identification of Trees and Shrubs in Winter Using Buds and Twigs. Produced in 2018, it, it's a worldwide book and covers over 700 species. The keys are incredible. They're really, really well written and well defined, but they do take some experience. This is by no means a beginner's book. The illustrations are beautiful as well, even worthy of hanging on a wall. They're that good. So if you're really struggling to separate say some of the different members of the horse chestnut or the buckeye groups then this has all the different sections within that genus and then lots of good keys to help you get out the species and it covers an incredible number of species so extremely useful but not for the beginner more for an advanced botanist and then also a lot of the species presented in it you're not going to come across regularly the final book in this range is The Field Key to Winter Twigs, a guide to native and planted deciduous trees, shrubs and woody climbers or xylophytes found in the British Isles. And is another example of great work by John Poland, who is we're all familiar with, with the vegetative key. It's a guide to over 400 species. Many are most are native, but there are many introduced and non-native species present in there as well. It has its usual indented keys, the format of those. So if you're familiar with the vegetative guide, then it's a very easy key to get into. All the previous keys and books that I mentioned have dichotomous keys. There are nice descriptions of each species within the key. Uh, at the end of the keys there's good illustrations beautiful illustrations done by robin walls and there's also some excellent photographs as well which really bring out the features and this is the book that i'd recommend everyone who's into winter botany having not only has john extended the se season with the vegetative key but with the winter twig key he's extended the uh, the season even further starting on page 17 of john poland's winter tree guide we get the key to the major divisions this is a few warnings here. It says that the key works best between the 15th of November after most leaf fall and a th between the 31st of March when most buds are starting to burst. And you often find that if you look before or after, then the measurements that are mentioned in John's book can be slightly out because the plants or the buds have started to, to develop and grow. It is possible to use it early in the season. It's more reliable then than it is certainly later in the, the year. So if you were using it in well into April, you'd find the buds have swollen too much and don't conform to the rules. So you want to collect a specimen. And we've got an example on the screen here. This is a specimen collected from a large tree with uh, various features highlighted here. So it's got a single terminal bud with these paired bud scales. They're a lovely bright green color, but the edges of the bud scales are darkened and then they have this minute ciliate fringe of hairs all along the margin. The leaf scars are quite prominent and in, in the illustration you can see just about pick out the three vascular bundles. In the middle of the leaf scar you can also see the tiny axillary buds as well there. Working our way down the specimen we've got opposite buds and they're arranged opposite to each other. And there's an interpetiolar ridge between the bud. This is the line that joins the two petiole scars together. And there's no uh, armour or th that is thorns or spines present. And this particular specimen was collected from a large tree. So starting at the beginning of the key, as I say, page 17, the key to major divisions. The first three questions we get asked are, are our buds and leaf scars alternate? If that was the case, we go to A. Are the buds and leaf scars opposite or sub-opposite? This is where they are slightly out of line with each other. We go to B. Or buds and leaf scars in three, occasionally six whorls. So when we think about world plants, we often think about things like cleavers or galliums. But in this case, we're talking about trees such as catalpa, which is Indian bean tree. And if that was the case, we go to C. So for our specimen that's on the screen, the buds and leaf scars are opposite. So we go to page B or letter visions in group B. Again, it tells us a little bit of information. It's worth reading this just to double check. Bud scales are in decusate pairs. So that means they're opposite in one plane. Then they rotate through 90 degrees and are opposite on the other plane. 
and so on. Twigs, we've got the two bullet points, so we then read twigs without an interpetiolar ridge or with an interpetiolar ridge. So this is the leaf scar that connects the line where the two um, bases of the petioles meet, so this, this sort of junction. And in our case, our specimen has it, and it asks us then, we drop down, as in John's other keys, this is an indented key, so we work our way through. We start by asking ourselves, are we a climber, a scrambler, a tree or a shrub? And in this case, we're a tree, so we drop down again. And we've got three questions here, all starting with buds. Buds not visible, or scales obscure. Buds naked, or with only one pair of scales. Or buds with more than two pairs of scales more than or equal to two pairs of scales. So in our case, we actually have six bud scales there. So we can go to this last one. Then we've got twigs are green or twigs not green. So our stems were sort of olive green. So maybe we need to check again. If the twigs are green, then it's very hollow. And this is pheasant berry, which is Leicisteria, Leicisteria formosa, which has an incredibly hollow, rather like a bamboo stem. So ours are definitely not like that. They are green-ish, but they're not without that large hollow. So then we drop down to buds. Are they mostly more than 12 millimetres? Twigs are moderately stout, and John actually defines what moderately stout is in his book nicely. Or well, the other option is buds are less than or equal to 12 millimetres. And other features, leaf scars, are they large, usually shield shape, or rarely large or shield shaped? So of these two lines I'm going to agree with the second one that our buds are a lot smaller than that the twigs are moderately stout and the leaf scars are not shield shaped and we drop down into two options we're either a tree occasionally small in which case we're probably an acer or a shrub occasionally a, a tree in in elder so I'm saying our plant is a tree so this is why you need to collect that information in the field and we'll go to BH and BH gives us a description here that our plant BH is an acer. The end buds or buds are usually less than 12 millimeters as a single terminal bud or a paired lateral buds. It gives very other descriptions saying the scales are two to eight pairs while we had six, so that's good. Twigs usually round and so on. So you could read through these characters and, and get to our, uh, so either green with dark margin scales or green with reddish tints or buds are reddish or purple. And definitely in our case, we've got green buds. So we're now down to only three species it could be. Are the buds hairy, at least near the tip, or buds hairless? Now our buds, even when we look closely, we could see that they were very shiny and reflective. And that's often a good hint that your specimen actually is a glabrous or a hairless specimen. We do have a minute fringe of hairs along the margin, but otherwise we're laborious. So we want to go to the buds hairless, and then we want to decide are the twigs green to reddish, or are they grey to olive brown? And we can read the description of Acer capadocicum, that's over somewhere further down the page, it's down the bottom, um, to see whether that matches our description. But before we do, we can also read this description here. Twigs are grey to olive greens, so that's good. Branchlets with bark not fissured. Okay, terminal bud is single or paired. That's true, that's what we've got, a single bud. Usually flanked by two small adpressed lateral buds. We had those. Five to ten millimetres, that's the right size. And they're usually acute. If you look at this slide, you'll see that they've got little sharp points. The scales, there's three, occasionally four pairs. We had three pairs, making a total of six scales. They're a lovely shiny green, occasionally reddish green. It says white or buff ciliate, and that's exactly what's around our margins of the, the bud scales. And if we were to peel them away, the inner bud scales would be, the inner scales would be white woody. Then lower down, the lateral buds are usually spreading and smaller. That shows nicely. The leaf scars are broadly crescent shaped. That shows it fairly well on the slide, and the bark is smooth and grey, and later flakes into square scales. So what we've got is sycamore Acer pseudoplatanus, and there's a nice uh, illustration of it on plate two. So if we flick through towards the back of the book, there's these beautiful illustrations. And there we have our specimen, 
Acer Pseudoplatinus showing those green bud scales with the white fringe of hairs on the margins, the opposite buds, the interpetiolar ridge between them. So a good example of how quick and efficient the key can be. Our next specimen is a tree with tightly adpressed buds. That means the buds are very tight and close to the actual stem of the twig. You can barely get a piece of paper behind them. They may slightly stick out at the end, but really they're incredibly close together. So all of the buds, whether they're terminal buds or lateral buds, are tight to the stem, they're adpressed. Now in this group of trees, you often find that the ends of the tips of the branches actually get, and the twigs, they actually get damaged. So in this case, the terminal bud is absent, but fortunately we don't need to know about that. The individual buds have only one bud scale. You can actually gently rock it and slowly peel it off, and you'll actually be able to reveal underneath the fluffy inside of the bud. And then they spiral around. They're arranged alternately, but the buds spiral around the stem. And then the, the bark in this particular street species has a lovely golden yellow colour, and there's no armour present, no thorns. To key this species, we start again at page 17, the key to major divisions. And reading the three bullet points, the three main couplets, we find that the first one, buds and leaf scars alternate, going to letter A matches best, as our plant has alternate buds and leaf scars. Once we're within A, we then have to decide two questions for primarily. Are the twigs armed with prickles, spines or thorns? Or are the twigs unarmed? And in this particular species, there's no armament of any sort, no thorns, spines or prickles. We then drop down a layer and look at the question that says, are we a climber, occasionally sprawling, or are we a tree or shrub? And in our case, we were quite a substantial tree. Dropping down again, the next question is at least some buds clustered, more than or equal to three at a twig tip or base of tip, or at least some buds superposed at lateral or terminal positions. So that means having a bud one above the other in the immediate sense. Or all buds are single, stalked or sessile. So the last bit, some species of trees actually have a little a short stalk beneath each bud and sessile means you lack that, that stalk. Our specimen only has the a single bud at each position. They're not superposed, there's not multiples. They're not clustered at the tips, um, as, which would be an example of something like an oak. So we need to go down the all bud single and the next question is, are the buds naked or with one scale that's more than two millimetres, buds two to three scales more than two millimetres, or buds with more than or equal to four scales or less than two millimetres. So of those three questions, the first one fits. Although we don't have buds which are naked, they've only got a single scale surrounding them. So we have to go to letters A, G. Once we're in A, G, it's worth reading the top description. It says group A, G, buds naked or with one scale more than two millimetres. Again, you've got the bullet points, but in this case, it doesn't help us anyway. So our first section to read is the black squares. Buds, are they naked and densely hairy or buds with one scale, densely hairy to hairless? And in our particular specimen, we've got no hairs. It's totally hairless and also it's only got one scales. So we drop down. Next question then is stipule scars. Are they small or absent, not encircling the twig? And the buds are all lateral and less than or equal to 12 millimetres, occasionally up to 15 millimetres. Or the other option is stipule scar is a line encircling twig from the top of the leaf scar. So there's a, a ring around the, star, the stem. For us, the first question matches and that tells us that we're a salix, a willow, and we need to go to sal, which is towards the end of the book. Once you're within Salix or Sal, page 155, it gives you a description here about the, the group, the genus as a whole, and also mentions things like hybrids occurring and how that can be an issue. So we've got two main sections of the key to start off with. Firstly, the square bullet points. Are we a tree or a shrub more than or equal to a metre, not rooting at nodes? Or are we a low shrub less than a metre, rooting at nodes? 
and in our case we're a very tall substantial tree so we can discount the bottom row or cell C. So we now have to distinguish between cell A and cell B. So if we read twigs and or buds hairy to densely so at least near the tip or twigs and buds usually more or less hairless then our specimen has got that lovely glossy look of about it and looking closely it has an absence of hairs so it should go into cell B. Once we're in cell B we can read the top description it may be useful to look at the bullet points with the numbers in and see if that could shortcut us but I'm going to ignore those for the moment and just look at the square boxes. So firstly it says at least some buds more or less opposite or the twigs are prunose so having that sort of sheen that you can rub off rather like it say on a plum um, when you rub it and it removes the, the, the bloom on the plum. Or the other option is all buds are alternate twigs never prunose and that's exactly our case we've got a, a strongly alternate specimen and no matter how much you handle the plant it doesn't rub off this bloom. So we drop down a level. Next twigs are moderate that's usually three to five millimeters in diameter and the buds are spreading. That's an unusual willow within the, the willow genus. In that goat willow, actually, they rather than be oppressed like our buds, they stick out at an angle. The other option in here is twigs are more or less slender, usually less than or equal to three millimeters diameter, and buds are more or less adpressed, and that's exactly what our specimen is. So we want to then drop down a second level to twigs more or less strongly ridged at least above midpoint or twigs round to more or less angled. We don't have these really strong ridges on our specimen so that gets rid of olive willow and almond willow but we're in the second grouping. So then twigs branching at 90 about 90 degrees brittle at base or twigs branching at less than 90 degrees brittle at base or not rarely slapping audibly this can be a slightly tricky one you need to have a look have the whole specimen there but after a while you can start to separate this in the field quite nicely in our case the branches are come off at a less than 90 degree angle they're relatively brittle but not massive not in such a way as crack willow so then we drop down to branchlets strongly drooping or weeping and that's in our case that's our, what our specimen is and over the page we've also we've got the other half branches spiraling like a corkscrew these are your corkscrew willows and some very weird and wacky non-natives introductions or branchlets not drooping or spiraling so for our specimen it was strongly drooping it's a weeping tree so we then have two options it can be the twigs are usually brittle at base shiny yellow or twigs moderately to strongly brittle, a shiny olive brown. Now our plant, when we looked at it, the stems are incredibly yellow, they're a lovely golden yellow. When we start to compare the other characters, the widths, they're similar, 1.5 to 2 millimeters diameter. Occasionally it pressed hairy near tip or hairless. Pith more or less five angled, that doesn't help. The bud size, we're slightly on the bigger size and they're very rounded, they're obtuse on the end, more or less obtuse, where they're more or less acute in weeping crack willow. So on comparing the two descriptions, we're more likely to actually have Salix times Sepulchralis chrysocoma, the golden weeping willow, than we are to have true weeping willow, Salix times Pendula. And knowing the tree in their habitat and having keyed it out using other methods, I can confirm that it is golden weeping willow. This species has incredibly distinctive buds, these rather sharp, acute, long, narrow buds that remind me of a cigar. Other people have called them spindle shaped. They are arranged alternately on the stems and then the lateral buds spread at a very distinctive 45 degree angle. There's a tiny, tiny stipule scar present just beneath the buds and it's showing just as a slight horizontal line on the pictures and apart from the very sharp buds there's no armor present and it makes a significant substantial tree starting at the key to major divisions on page 17 again we have a plant which has strongly alternate leaves and bud scars and scales so if we start with the three boxes it's the first row we're going to take so we're going to go to letter A 
Within letter A, we can quickly rule out the twigs being armed, so we go to the second of the couplets. Again, it's a tree or a shrub, so we've ruled out it being a climber. And now we're at at least some buds clustered at the twig tip or base of the twig, so like an oak. At least some buds superposed, one above the other, so you have a small and a little bud at each node. Or all buds single, stalked or sessile. And that's where we would go here, we've got a single bud at each node. We then drop down, are our buds naked or with one scale? Well, looking at the image, we've got several scales. We've got probably about eight or nine plus. So the next one is buds with two to three scales. That doesn't fit. Or the last option is buds with more than four scales or less than two millimeters. And if we take it that we've got more than four scales, then we need to go that route. We then have to decide, are our twigs green or twigs not green? A word of warning as well is that sometimes algae can make your twig very green, so if you're in the wetter parts of the UK, then you might have that issue. But our twigs are a nice dark glossy mahogany brown colour. And then this is where I find that most people go wrong, and in fact I regularly go wrong at this point. So the only way to get round it um, is to go down multiple routes. So this is because looking for stipule scars, they can be incredibly hard to find on your specimen, often because they're minute or they're obscured by buds and bud scars. So the first question is, twig, stipule scars are present on twigs, usually adjacent to the leaf scars, and it mentions about look carefully at several nodes, etc. Stipules are persisting, so they don't fall off or, they, or leave a scar, or stipule scars and stipules are absent. Now it'd be very easy for this species to just go straight onto stipule scars and stipules are absent, but actually if you look incredibly closely you'll find that they are present. But if you weren't sure if they're in a real world situation then you go down the stipule scars absent route and find it. it wouldn't get you to a satisfactory answer. So you'd move up a level and maybe decide on stipule scars being present. If we take that as the case, our next two questions are lateral buds, are they more or less oppressed to the twig? So tight to the twig and in this case they're really spreading from the twig. So that's where we go to AL. Once you're in AL, the first question is about your lateral buds. And the lateral buds should have the lowest scale directly above the leaf scar, or is the lowest scale offset, so not directly above. And it's quite a, it takes a little bit of getting used to to visualise this, but once you've seen it, it's quite clear. In our case, the lateral buds, the lowest scale of the lateral buds is not immediately above the leaf scar, so we, we move on to that, that route. Then we have buds usually 9 to 25 millimetres, or the other option is buds less than 9 millimetres. And in our case, our buds are quite substantial, they're getting up to um, 25 centimetres an inch long. Dropping in again are the twigs moderate, 4 to 5 millimetres wide, buds 7 to 12, and so on, in which case it would be prunus serrelata, or the twigs more or less slender, about 1 to 3 millimetres diameter. And this is where we would go. There's a little warning here about Carpinus betulus, which is hornbeam, which can pretend to be other species, and although lots of the books describe the plants as having quite tightly, almost appressed buds, they can occasionally ping out and look quite odd. So we drop down into three species now. We're either a beech, we're a member of the Betula genus, or we're Nothophagus ruli. So to separate these, you need to look at your size of your buds, and the lateral buds should be 15 to 25 millimetres, 9 to 15, or 9 to 15. And in our case, we've got quite substantial buds. They're closer to 25 millimetres. They're oblique to the leaf scar, they're standing out at an angle, spreading at around 60 degrees, it says here. And if we carry on reading through the description, we find that it neatly matches um, the description for beech, Fagus sylvatica, a lot better than it does for the betula or the nothophagus. This is sometimes where beginners with this book struggle because they struggle to compare all the features. So what I would do is I'd be reading through and comparing each set. So firstly, lateral buds 15 to 25 as opposed to 9 to 15 in the lower two. That's a tick for the first one. Are the terminal buds similar or are they different? And they and compare them again. 
Are there any other features that he's underlined as well? John's uh, used the underlining to, to show strong character. Our next specimen is a slightly quirky one. It was a small tree. Occasionally it grows as a, up to a large shrub, but can get up to the size of a small tree. I found in a churchyard recently. It's got these beautiful felty, fine silvery downy hairs that coat its buds. They look rather like sort of rabbit's paws in texture. So the terminal bud is quite slightly conical. Uh, a single bud scale. It's incredibly obscured though by these downy hairs. And then the other buds further down the stem, the auxiliary buds, sorry, the lateral buds, they're a lot smaller. They're not as conical, but again, they're very downy. And notice the downiness also on the stems. Another unusual feature is the stipule scars, which encircle the stems completely. They start from just above the point where a leaf scar is and then drop down and round and behind and then back around again to the front and uh, around the stem. And just above that point is where the bud comes from. So stipule scars are quite an in interesting feature. They're quite diagnostic to one or two families as well. And also when I cut the plant and had a sniff of the wood, which I often do, you'll find that in this case, this species, it's quite an aromatic, quite a sweet, pleasant scent. At the key to major divisions, at three questions, we're going to answer buds and leaf scars are alternate. And we'll go to question A or section A. At section A, we're then describing are the twigs armed with prickles or unarmed? In this case, we're an unarmed tree. We're also then separating are we a climber or a tree or shrub? And in this case, again, we're a tree. And then we drop down a level, at least some buds clustered at tips, twig tip or base of twigs. That's not us. At least some buds superposed that's not us, or all buds are single, occasionally one or two collateral, meaning there's a few maybe spare ones, and that sounds like us. We've got a single terminal bud. So our buds are either naked, usually densely hairy, that possibly looks like us, or with only one scale, so we could fit in there as well, whether we're struggling to separate, whether we've got a bud scale there, or we're densely hairy. The second question is buds with two to three scales, and a third question is buds with more than four scales. I think we can definitely rule out the more than four and we can rule out two to three scales because they're just not visible. If we were to carefully peel a specimen, we'd see that it just has a single inferling scale there. So that gets us to AG. At AG, we have to work a little bit harder. Do we have buds which are naked and densely hairy? Things like sumac and uh, older buckthorn. But when you look closely at those, you can see little primitive, little primordial leaves hidden away in there. Whereas in our case, we've got something that wraps all the way around. So we've got at least one scale. So one option is buds naked, densely hairy. No. The other option is buds with one scale, densely hairy to hairless. That's exactly what we've got. Dropping down, we've got stipule scars are small or absent, not encircling the twig. That would be the willows, the route we've gone previously. Or the other option is stipule scar is a line encircling the twig from the top of the leaf scar. And that's exactly what we've got. We then drop it down again a layer. And this is where we've got several places we can come out. We're either a terminal bud, usually 10 to 50 millimetres, densely hairy to hairless. And reading a bit further on, it says inner bark aromatic. That's a useful feature. The other option is terminal buds are 12 to 25 millimetres. So a little bit smaller than our buds. They're hairless conical and accumulates just sharply pointed often curved that doesn't quite sound like us certainly not the hairless bit or the next option is terminal bud is absent and that uh, would be the case of things like london plains where actually the petiole of the leaf protects the newest growth the buds so there is never any exposed terminal bud so out of all of those the top question terminal buds usually 10 to 50 millimeters densely hairy to hairless hairy in our case swings twigs slender to stout and with inner bark aromatic will get us to magnolia within group magnolia there's quite a detailed description describing all of the features this group has if we start looking at the major squares we've got three questions to ask are the buds purplish black underneath any hairs and they're hairless to densely hairy? 
are the buds green and more or less hairless in the lower um, half, densely silver hairy above, or the buds densely white or yellowish hairy. Well, in our case, we've got this lovely silvery white hair. So I'm going down into the second, uh, to, into the third section, and then we've got leaf scars more crowded near the twig tip or leaf scars more or less equally spaced along the twig. And in our specimen, they're evenly uh, grow evenly spaced along. Now we have to go over the page here, but we've got first is terminal bud is densely white, silky, hairy, with short, less than a millimeter, a 0.5 millimeter, very depressed hairs. The bud size is one and a half to two and a half centimeters, and they're very curved. They're quite a distinctive shape in Magnolia ecuminata. The other option is terminal bud is densely white or yellowish furry hairy with long spreading to more or less depressed hairs. And you can see on the image I've got that they're quite um, quite showy, quite long and spreading out. And it's not as substantial a tree as the previous um, species, which is cucumber and magnolia. So we're down to three species it could be. Term the first one, a terminal bud is two to three centimetres with around one millimeter white slightly spreading hairs terminal bud one to two and one and a half to two centimeters with two to four millimeters yellowish spreading hairs or the last one terminal bud one to one and a half centimeters with one to two millimeters white spreading hairs now we have quite a large terminal bud so that fits with the top one our hairs though are relatively short and they are white as opposed to yellow so that rules out magnolia stellata and um they're only slightly spreading as opposed to widely spreading for Magnolia salicifolia, willow leaf magnolia. Then if we compare the other features, the size of the lateral buds and the leaf scars, are they broad? In our case, they're broadly crescent shaped to heart shaped as opposed to crescent shaped. So overall, I think we've got a nice example here of source of Magnolia, Magnolia times Solangiana. Now that you've had a taste of using the, the key by John Poland, I'd recommend going out and using your own copy of the book with a plant that you're familiar with. So whether that's a sycamore or a rowan or something like that, and attempt to key it out. And if you get stuck, you can always use the index at the back and it, that will help you to know which part of the key you should have gone into. And then you can start to review whether you've maybe missed stipule scales, or stipule scars rather, or any other feature. And in time, that'll build up your, your skills using the key. Well, thank you for listening, taking the time to view this video. I hope you found it useful, and I hope it will give you a good introduction to how to use John Poland's field key to winter twigs. Good luck using it, and if you've got any questions, that you'd like answering then I'm happy to answer those by email if you'll see on the last slide that there's our email address there so drop me a line have a look around out for more practical ways to do winter tree ID so going out with groups of people and there's various courses run around the country including by people like ourselves so I hope to maybe see you one day and catch you in the wild or in a classroom enjoying looking at plants. Goodbye.